In this video we're going to be looking at solving quadratics where we have to factorise them into a single bracket. In previous videos we've looked at factorising quadratics but now we're actually solving them because they are part of an equation. So for the first one um, we have x times x minus 7 and for this we have to work out the possible values of x that would give us an answer of 0. Well essentially what we have is one number x times another number x minus 7. Um, so if x is 0, so 0 times something will give us 0. So if this is 0 or if this bracket is 0 then the answer will be 0. So either x equals 0 because that would make this term 0 or this bracket is 0. So, or x minus 7 equals 0, in which case x would equal to 7. So we have two results here, either x equals se uh, 7 or x equals 0. Let's look at the next one. Um, we have, actually before we look at the next one, let's try and apply this to some graphs. So if I bring in a graph axis... How does this relate to the graph? Well, when we factorise um, something and we equal it and it's equal to zero, this tells us, these tell us the roots of the graph. So that tells us where they cross the x-axis. So we have a quadratic here. If we were to expand it, we would get x squared minus 7x. Um, and so in which case we have a positive quadratic which means we're going to have a curve like this but it goes through where x is 0 so it'll go through there and it'll also go through where x is 7 so there it doesn't tell us anything else about how steep the graph is or how shallow it is or anything like that but it does tell us where it crosses um, the x-axis and that's some important information um, let's do the same with the uh, with the second one, we're not going to apply it to the graph, in fact I'm going to take that away um, but if we look at the second one we've got uh, 2a outside of 7a minus 10 and that equals naught. so again either this equals 0 or this bracket equals 0 so we've got either 2a equals 0 or 7a minus 10 equals 0. 2a equals 0 means that just a equals 0. Or we have that 7a equals positive 10, so a equals 10 over 7. So we have two results again, and those will be where the um, curve crosses the x-axis. So for this one, if I was to sketch it this time, it would cross at 0, 0, and at 10 sevenths. Um, and that's what it would kind of look like, although it doesn't tell us information about where this turning point is or how steep these lines are or any other kind of information. Um, OK, let's uh, move on to the last couple of questions, which are expressions which have not been factorised yet. So you can see those first couple are quite easy. Um, if you look at some expressions that haven't yet been factorised, um, we've got 4d squared plus 20d equals 0. And we're going to factorise this as much as possible. So we can take out a 4, and we can take out d, and we'll be left with d plus 5 on the inside. So either 4d equals 0, because again, remember, we want either this number to be 0 or this number to be 0, because any number times 0 equals 0. So 4d equals 0, or d plus 5 equals 0. So 4 times 0 is 0, so d must be 0 for that side, or d equals minus 5. Moving on to the last one. We have 35p 
squared equals minus 21p. Now, when you haven't got the equation equal to zero, such as here, you need to rearrange it so that it is equal to zero, because that's how you solve these quadratics. So, for this one, I'm going to add 21p to both sides, which will make this side zero. So we'll have 35p squared plus 21p, and that equals to zero. Now I can factorise. I can take out 7p. I'm going to be left with 5p plus 3 equals zero. Um, and then we just need to finish off. So either 7p equals zero, or 5p plus 3 equals 0. So p equals 0 or 5p equals minus 3 in which case p equals minus 3 over 5. So we get two answers there again. Now you don't always get two answers. Um, sometimes you get one answer and sometimes you get no answers and that depends on what the graph looks like. So you could have, um, you'll get two answers if the graph cuts the x-axis twice. You'd get one answer if the graph just touches the x-axis, so just, just touches it like that, and if you have a graph that doesn't touch the x-axis, um, doesn't cross the x-axis at all, could be a negative one or a positive one, then you won't have any solutions um, that cross at zero. So that's just something to be aware of. There are ways of finding out how many solutions you get. That's called the discriminant, and we'll be looking at that in some future videos.